All right, these notes, you should have a PowerPoint set of notes that go with this, and I believe they are filled in so you can follow along as we attack this. We are looking mainly at the structure of the atom and how it relates to the periodic table, and we'll look at electron arrangement and the patterns of reactivity. At the end, we'll look at things called isotopes. So you should know periods are rows. That means left to right. And as you go down a group, you go to bigger and bigger shells, and you're moving down through the different periods. So if you look at something like sodium, sodium is in the third row, so the third period, so it would have three layers of electrons. And everything in the same row to the right of sodium will have three layers of electrons, electron shells. Now groups on the periodic table are the same as chemical families, and they are columns. They run up down. So group one are the alkali metals, and it turns out they all have one outer electron. Why they're called a family is because they want to behave the same way. They're going to have similar properties. So all the alkali metals want to lose one electron to become stable. So elements are going to gain or lose electrons in order to become isoelectronic with the nearest noble gas. Iso means the same. So that means they're trying to have the same electron arrangement as that nearest noble gas. And for metals, it's easiest if they lose electrons to do that. And for nonmetals on the right of the periodic table, it's easiest if they gain electrons to do that. Now we have to remember electrons are negatively charged. So losing a negative is a positive you end up with a positively charged ion. And if you're a non-metal and you gain electrons, you gain negative. So those form negative ions. Now most noble gases have eight outer electrons. And so there's something called the octet rule. Oct means eight. Like octopus. We'll have the eight arms. Oct an octagon has eight sides. Uh, October used to be the eighth month of the year before they installed July and August. So anyways, the octet rule means elements are going to gain or lose electrons to try to have a full outer shell of eight electrons. The only exception are elements near helium because it's happy with two outer electrons. A neutral atom has no net charge. What that means is the amount of positive charge in the atom equals the amount of negative charge. The things that have charge are protons, electrons, so a neutral atom will have the same number of protons as electrons. So when you hear the word atom, automatically you say, okay, let's say I'm looking at sulfur. Sulfur is at spot 16. If it's an atom of sulfur, it's going to have 16 protons, and therefore it will also have 16 electrons. And so the periodic table is trying to help you out with that. A positive ion, the number of electrons will be fewer than number of electro number of protons, or number of protons is bigger than number of electrons. The bottom line is the positive charge is one, and that's what you'll see on your periodic table of ions. That that well, for the metals they will have more protons and electrons when they become ions, and that means the opposite is true for negative ions for non-metals. So non-metals, they gain electrons when they become ions, and therefore they have more electrons and protons. So if you looked at something like chlorine, chlorine, when it's a neutral atom, will have 17 protons, 17 electrons. It wants to gain one to be isoelectronic with the nearest noble gas. So now it has 18 electrons, but only 17 protons. And therefore it has one extra electron, one extra negative, so it's a one minus ion. Hopefully that's making some sense.
So noble gas is a full outer shell. Metals don't. So they're going to lose. Lose electrons, positive ions. Non-metals gain electrons, become negative ions. If you know a few rules about chemistry, it means you can know very little and actually know a lot. It's all about seeing the patterns. Notice non-metal like color to this. Sulfur is yellow color to remind you of non-metals. It doesn't really help you on your black and white page. So reactivity, why do we care about electrons? Well, electrons are in the outside of the atom. So chemical reactions result from atoms bumping into each other and things happening. What's going to happen is typically electrons are going to be lost or gained or shared. But it's stuff on the outside of the atom that happens to. Protons and neutrons are trapped in the nucleus. They're not going to be altered by chemical reactions. So reactivity is all about or based on electron arrangement. So we're going to look at a bunch of elements. We're going to figure out their group number, their outer electrons, and what they have to do to become stable. So we look at lithium. This is a Roman numeral one right here. And that means we remember a lithium is the left of the staircase. It's metal. It wants to lose one electron. So we write that as a regular one outer electron. Loses one electron. Now it becomes Li1+. Sulfur. We're going to see a Vi here. Vi, Roman numeral six. It's non-metal. Six and two makes eight, it's gained two electrons, gained two negatives, so it's S2 minus. Calcium's group two, so that's a Roman numeral two, regular number two. It's a metal, it loses two electrons, so it's gonna be a two plus ion. Phosphorus, we get the V, V means five, so it's gonna gain three electrons. And when it does that, it ends up with a 3 minus charge. And your back of your periodic table will tell you that on the ion side. Argon's a Boston Bruin, noble gas. We see VII is 8. It is already perfect. And therefore, it has 8 outer electrons, stays the same, does not form ions. That's stuff you should know from previous courses. We have some other terms to throw at you that have to become automatic. On the periodic table, atomic number is that upper left number. It's an address, but it also keeps track of the number of protons. So the number of protons defines an element. Any element with 79 protons is going to be a gold atom. Any atom that has 11 protons is going to be sodium. Atomic mass is the number of protons plus neutrons. And that makes sense because protons, neutrons have mass, electrons don't have mass. So that's why you have to remember that first chart. So you should recall iso means the same. So isotopes means we're looking at different forms of the same element that have different atomic masses. If they're the same element, they gotta have the same number of protons. And if they have different masses, then they have to have different numbers of neutrons. And so now we get into some isotopes charts. So I believe these are filled in and we want to go through the logic. So if I'm looking at fluorine 19, right away I'm going to put a 19 here. Then I look up fluorine and I see it's at spot 9, so I'm going to go 9 there and 9 there because atomic number and protons are the same. Then I know protons and neutrons add together to give me the mass. So if I take the mass and subtract the protons, I'll get the neutrons. And the tricky thing is the number of electrons. Here we're going to have the positives from protons, the negative from electrons. And we compare those two numbers and we see do the protons win, where it's positive. 
or if the electrons win, then it's going to be negative, and if it's equal, then we would have an atom. So we have all these things to fill in. So there's our 9 and 9. Those things are the same. That 19 went straight here. 19 minus 9 is 19. And then we see 9 versus 10, and we say, hey, we've got the right number of electrons because we end up with one extra negative. Now we're looking at B2+. plus. Beryllium lives at spot 4, so we're going to have 4 here and 4 here. That 9 goes in for the mass. 9 minus 4 is 5. And this time it says 2+, plus, so we've got to have two more protons than electrons. And we do. 4 to 2. Two extra pluses. We do the same thing for copper. We know that 64 goes here. We know copper lives at spot 29, so we can see 29 and 29. And then we can go 64 minus 29 is 35. And we're going to have our 29 and 27. Oh, two extra protons. That means two extra pluses. So it's going to look like this. It'd be nice if the Cu2 plus came in there. And there it is, a little bit late. And then silver 108, we know silver, that 108 goes right here for mass, lives at 47, so 47 there, 47 there. And then we're going to go 108 minus 47 to get our 61 neutrons. And we're going to see 47 all, we're going to just have an atom of silver. So that's how you work out the logic, how those things get filled in. And then we have one more sheet of things coming in in weird order, doing the same business. So we had 201, we put it there, 80 and 80, 201 minus 80 is 121, and it says 2 plus, so the protons have to win by 2, so 80 minus 2 is 78, making sure the positives win. So when we look at this beast, different order. So here's our 35. We're going to put a 35 there. 80 minus 35 is 45. We're going to have a 35 here and a 36 there. We're going to see we have one extra electron. So we're going to end up with a 1 minus ion. And there we are. We take that 80. We've got to put the 80 there. That's the mass of our isotope. And we have our 35s because atomic number of protons are the same. We look at platinum. Platinum lives at spot 78, so we're going to have a 78 and 78 there. And we're going to go 117 plus 78, so we should get something like a 195 for our mass, and we'll have to include that in our name. And it's a 4 plus charge, so we're going to go 78 minus 4, and we'll get our 74. And so these numbers should be matching up to your chart. But the method of attack is, once you know it's platinum, that number goes there, that number goes there. Now when you know these two things, protons and neutrons, you can get the mass. And with that 4+, plus, we went 78 minus 4 to get our 74 there. Protons had to win. Hydrogen 1+, plus, I actually gave you too much info there. Didn't have to give you the atomic number. So when we look at this beast, we have a 1 here and a 1 there. And then we go 1 minus 1 is 0 for our neutrons. It's a 1 plus charge, so all that means is we have one proton and no electrons. And we've got to remember to put the mass of our isotope there. So from this PowerPoint, you should now have a clue about stuff you've learned before to do with electron arrangement, group number, and filling an isotope chart. Your masses in the periodic table will often have numbers to the right decimal point. When we fill out our isotopes charts, we're only going to look at one kind of isotope, and that means we're only going to be dealing with integers. No numbers that have, or no numbers with it, numbers to the right of the decimal point. So that's it.